There are so many drama-filled stories going on backstage in the WWE. It is practically impossible to keep track of all the stories anymore. Despite the fact that WWE isn't considered real like NFL or NBA are, it is very common to see stories surrounding disgruntled employees in the WWE gain popularity online. There are innumerable dirt sheets and podcasts, not to mention interviews from former employees who share their insane stories that are pretty commonplace in the world of pro wrestling. WWE is the biggest name in the pro wrestling business, and even if the independent scene has been getting a lot more mainstream attention over the last few years, none of those promotions hold a candle to the mighty WWE. The company hasn't ascended to the top of the food chain without ruffling some feathers, and the list of wrestlers past and present who hate WWE isn't short by any stretch of the imagination. Female wrestlers have just started to get their due in WWE, with the company dedicated to finally showcasing its female talent on the same level as its men. Regardless of that fact, disgruntled employees are to be expected in any company, but WWE women have had it exceptionally difficult for a long time. Women in wrestling have a lot more to be upset about with WWE in general, so let's check out 10 female wrestlers who hated working for the WWE. Just a disclaimer, this list will consist of wrestlers who have had a decent relationship with WWE overall, but specific angles and segments would have definitely left them regretting their decision to ever work for the company in the first place. People speak about the most influential female wrestlers, especially over the last decade. AJ Lee can sometimes be left out of the conversation, especially if you are a WWE employee. Lee left the company soon after her husband CM Punk walked out, leaving a hole in the company's Divas division. Lee was always very vocal about how the company didn't value its female stars nearly as much as it did the men, with the women even being paid a fraction of the amount that the men were paid for the same amount of work. She also drew attention to the fact that women were often sexualized in the company and not taken nearly as seriously as their male counterparts. Once Lee left, WWE went out of its way to erase her accomplishments by having Total Divas star Nikki Bella surpass Lee as the longest reigning Divas champion. Lee even dropped a pipe bomb, much like Punk before her, calling out the Bella Twins and how they leveraged their relationships with Daniel Bryan and John Cena to become the faces of the Divas division. Even though they had no real talent to speak of, today wrestlers such as Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks are credited with kicking off the women's revolution, but Lee's contribution to revolutionizing women's wrestling cannot be ignored, and it's obvious that there is no love lost between Lee or WWE because Lee has distanced herself from pro wrestling altogether and WWE mentions her as often as it does CM Punk, which is pretty much never. He just joined a long list of wrestlers who had to prematurely retire due to injury. The former anti-diva had a tumultuous year and a half before she had to announce her retirement from in-ring competition. Things started going downhill when she began dating a still-married Alberto Del Rio. WWE was reportedly very against the relationship and with Paige failing a wellness test and then apparently failing to show up for another, it was painfully obvious that Paige's relationship with the company had turned sour very quickly. It's difficult to say just how good a relationship with Del Rio was, but he was definitely a bad influence on the young superstar, as it is no coincidence that her relationship with the company significantly improved once her relationship with the Mexican star came to an end. Paige is now the GM of SmackDown and is a part of a continuing trend of WWE to give work to its injured talent. It is difficult to see something like this happening if she had continued to spiral while she was with Del Rio. There is no doubt that she would have continued hating WWE if she had stayed in the relationship and probably would have severed all ties by now. China was one of the most influential stars of all time. She had the world at her feet, but had everything fall apart seemingly overnight. The reason for her downfall was her relationship with Triple H. China and Triple H were dating when the cerebral assassin cheated on her with his now wife Stephanie. After that relationship with the game came to an end, she was hastily let go by the company, following which her life pretty much fell apart. She ended up spiraling as she became addicted to substances and even had an ill-advised foray into the adult entertainment industry. The ninth wonder of the world was very vocal of her hatred for Triple H and the McMahon clan after she left the company. WWE obviously has no love left for her, as they only went to the extent of releasing a short article lamenting her death and a simple video which acted as a tribute to the star.
Eva Marie should have never been asked to be an in-ring performer in the first place, but she was. She obviously tried, but it was readily obvious that the red-haired superstar was not even close to the level of expertise required to be a wrestler with WWE, no amount of private training lessons with Dee Bryan Kendrick were enough to salvage her career. As she was either incessantly mocked or openly despised by the universe, WWE viewed her as a marketable asset, but she was no wrestler. So it should come as no surprise that when the two parties went their separate ways, Marie would be left quite bitter about her experience with the company. Candice Michelle joined the WWE through the annual Diva Search and became the first contestant from the Diva Search to win the Women's Championship in 2007. Michelle was doing reasonably well for herself, even performing alongside Tori Wilson at WrestleMania 22 shortly after her Playboy cover was shown to the world. But things didn't end well between Michelle and the WWE. She was released by the company in 2009 while she was recovering from an injury. Yes, that's correct, WWE fired her when she was recovering from a shattered collarbone. Michelle has done well for herself since her release and has gone on to have three daughters before announcing her retirement from the wrestling business in December of last year, but she has definitely still got to be sour about the poorly timed firing. Sable was one of the first stars to usher in the Divas era in the WWE, but if we are being honest, the term Diva could be used to reference her attitude backstage. Sable was one of the most popular stars on the roster and even held the women's title. She even posed for Playboy before finding love with Brock Lesnar despite being married to fellow wrestler Mark Marrow at the time. She was hated backstage to such an extent that when she left WWE for the first time, Xbox defecated in her bag as a going away present. That should tell you everything you need to know about Sable's tenure with WWE. There is no doubt that Melina hated working for WWE. While dating fellow superstar John Morrison, Melina embarked on an affair with self-proclaimed womanizer Batista. She is known as the most controversial woman in wrestling for a reason, as the wrestling press has often portrayed her as a difficult, erratic woman with far more enemies than friends in WWE. Her affair with Batista and general attitude backstage caused her to get nuclear heat with the officials and as a result of her association with Morrison caused both wrestlers to lose their pushes in the company. A lot of people would argue that Melina was a victim of double standards in the company, but it doesn't change the fact that Melina probably hated every second she was with the company and was probably happy to part ways. Lita is one of the most influential superstars of all time and her feud with Trish Stratus is one of the greatest feuds in history. But everything wasn't all a bed of roses for Lita as she definitely had her ups and downs. Things came to a head when she cheated on her boyfriend Matt Hardy with Edge but WWE capitalized on it by having Hardy and Edge feud on their programming. Lita truly made Edge's career and he would not be the rated R superstar without her. Odds are Lita hated being a part of the company when they asked her to go topless under the covers as a part of Edge's live sex celebration in the middle of the ring. The segment even resulted in a nip slip for Lita when the camera moved too close to the pair when they were under the covers. Definitely not the best moment in a Hall of Fame career. There are many people who would proclaim that Sunny was the original diva. She is one of the greatest valets in the company's history, but her reputation backstage was truly terrible. She always had a problem with substance abuse and even worked for WCW and ECW before ending up where she is now. In and out of jail and performing for paying customers on Skype, Sunny's fall from grace is a sight to behold as she has publicly disclosed her disdain for the WWE while stating she doesn't watch the program anymore and has even gone as far as criticizing both Lynch and Banks for their looks. Before the Divas Revolution, Gail Kim was definitely the most talented female wrestler on the continent. WWE hit gold when she signed with the company, but they managed to drop the ball with her on two separate occasions. According to reports, Vince McMahon initially did not want to hire Kim because she was Asian. Also, Kim has openly stated that she has no interest in returning as she felt mistreated on a professional as well as a personal level by McMahon and that she still holds a grudge. These are 10 female stars who hated working for the WWE. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching Wrestling Hub, and I'll see you later with more videos.